the treatment of acute myeloid leukemia, let's say the modern treatment of acute myeloid leukemia, has started in the early 70s. And I think it was around 1973 where the famous 3 plus 7 or 7 plus 3 has been introduced. So soon we will be celebrating the 50 years anniversary of 3 plus 7. Uh, and we've lived with this for almost 40 years. Uh, the good recent news is about the advent of many new targeted therapies in acute myeloid leukemia. And we owe this to the uh, better understanding of the molecular features and the pathophysiology of the disease. And this is why AML cases are being now subdivided uh, into different smaller and smaller entities. And we are able uh, to target IDH1, we are able to target IDH2, uh, we are able, of course, to target uh, FLAT3, etc., etc. But despite all of these advances, we know, unfortunately, that these targeted therapies alone are not going to be curative. They are bringing a lot of added value and they are being helpful to many patients. This is why I believe intensive chemotherapy is still an important option in the young and fit patient. And this is why having a sort of a modern intensive uh, chemotherapy equivalent to 3 plus 7, namely the CPX351, is really a smart and attractive option because it allows you to deliver the intensive chemotherapy that you need and which we know is quite effective and well established, but also it allows you to minimize the side effect. And I believe that in the near future, we will be also able uh, to combine uh, this modern form of uh, chemotherapy with all the new targeted therapies. So I think uh, it's really fascinating to see uh, the progress we've made in the field of AML in the last few years. And nobody will complain about this. This is really good news for our patients.